know what that was. So yeah. you learn something new every day. There you go. There you go. I, I think this has, been an, this has been an exceptional year for flowering trees. It has been. It has been. The, the cynthia was amazing and all the flowering crabs and everything now, they're just roses. I don't think it's, it. it's hard to see. It took a Oh, oh, we got a lot of dogs. <laughs> oh, Wendy, are you Graceland? <laughs> Maybe Graceland. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pray also. Yeah. Oh, Tanya, tell them about Gina. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. No, well, I guess Gina um, is headed off to university in September and she wants to do kinesiology. So she has decided to go to Laurier in September. Great. And Kayla returns to Queens to do her master's in um, public administration. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Great. Martin, Martin went to Laurier first and Jane was at Queens. For oh, wow. So Great. <laughs> We're following each other. Great. Whoa, I'll let them know. She's very, very smart. Take after them, Mom. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, Nicola. I don't think oh, it's me. Oh, Jeff is not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's 1021. So let's. <laughs> That's worship. So happy Pentecost and let's, uh, let's let it go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to the church. And now we have some pretty wild uh, sound or feedback going on. Do we all know who, does anyone else hear that? Like this fuzz? Just me? All right, let's. No, it's not just you. And do I hear it as well? You, you hear it as well? I hear it too. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's, um, and now it's, okay, hold on a sec. Nicola, I think it might be your mic. Yeah, can you? Your volume might be, no, well, it's, I, I think your volume might be pushed a little too high. So there's yeah. a, a bit more feedback. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you're muted, so, yep. Can I just ask Reg, Reg, can you add Gord and also Alan to our prayers? Gord and Alan, it was, um, another one was in the chat room, please. Thank you. And now I'll mute myself for the good of all. <laughs> and uh, Nicola, as you, as you mute, if you could just go into those settings and bump your microphone down a little. Okay, great. Okay, let's take a minute uh, of quiet, uh, a, a brief moment of quiet to collect ourselves and we'll start. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Maxine, we just need you to unmute. I was mentioning that I will be repeating a section of the reading at the beginning and the end using the Jamaican Patwa Bible. A reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. When Pentecost did come, all of the people were believing that Jesus did gather up in the same place. And all of them, all of a sudden, them one hear one noise and a come from the sky. The noise sound like when trunk, trunk breeze a blow and it full up the whole house where them did sit down. Then sis, them see some something will look like lick of fire was shaped like tongue and it come rest on every one of them head. The Holy Spirit take control of all of them and give them power to talk like some different, different language. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Job. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire 
and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Me I go show some powerful sign up in the sky and show some sign upon the earth. Here. Blood of blood and fire and one ton of smoke. The sun I got on black like a night and the moon I got on red like blood before the big and important day come for the Lord do some powerful sitting. And everybody will call upon the Lord name go and get saved. The word of the Lord. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there living things both small and great. There go the ships, and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hands, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the, may the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. In glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, according to John. But when the counselor comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me. And you are also witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will conceive, he will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so how is my volume? No feedback. Excellent, excellent. I, I would like to start by just saying thank you to Maxine. I love that reading. I would have loved the whole reading. It, it brought it to life, didn't it? It's so good to hear it just slightly differently. It just kind of brings out new nuances and, and meaning. So thank you for that. That was fantastic. We should have that gospel, like that version of the Bible used sometimes. It's really good. Well, let us pray. Spirit of God, move among us, we pray, and enlighten our hearts that we may see you and hear you and know you as you move among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So every year we, um, we celebrate Pentecost, but this year I'd like to focus on appreciating the work of the Holy Spirit in our own lives and in the lives of one another. Because faith is lived and breathed by the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit. And that's something that is important for us to remember. You are here today because the Holy Spirit is already living and breathing in you. You could be off doing other things, but because of the faith that is in you by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're with us this morning. 
And so the Holy Spirit moves in many, many different ways. And we often concentrate year after year on the Acts reading. And it's a very, very powerful story with the wind and the flames and the, uh, the disciples rushing out to go and uh, spread the good news and speak in all those different languages. And the, the Acts reading is, is really the, um, the story of the birth of our church. But if we just cast our mind over the whole of the scriptures and we think back um, even to the psalm, Psalm 104, we see that God has been, uh, the Holy Spirit has been present since the very beginning, since the beginning of creation, the Spirit of God is present. Now, yesterday um, I was at Lake Simcoe and I went for a swim and it was very, very cold. And uh, I was with my sister and uh, we, we were standing in Lake Simcoe and it was just like glass. It was perfectly still. It was the most gorgeous, gorgeous, freezing cold lake. And there were some geese behind us, quite a few geese, actually. And suddenly, without warning, four of them, they took off from the lake behind us and they flew two in between us and one either side of us. And I have to tell you, it was the most breathtaking experience because they were kind of at, at chest level right next to us and the power of their wings. I mean, I was to say that I was unnerved was um, <laughs> mild, <laughs> but it was also beautiful. So it was it was both unnerving and beautiful and powerful. And, uh, and they were so elegant. And then, of course, when they land, they honked. And it was like they were laughing at us because I think they could see that we were kind of <laughs> disturbed by their presence. But it reminded me that in Celtic Christianity, it's the goose that is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Because the Celts saw the, uh, the goose and the Holy Spirit as a disturber, not in a bad way, but a disturber who kind of shakes us up and moves us and points us to new things. And so not, not the uh, symbol of the dove, this very peaceful little bird, but the symbol for the Celts was the, the wild goose. They're strong and they're powerful, but geese also protect and they guard. Now, as Canadians, the goose might not be our go-to image, right? <laughs> Canadians have very strong feelings about uh, Canada geese. But, you know, maybe if you look at a goose and you think Holy Spirit, maybe it will make you feel a little kindlier towards them or even actually appreciate them. So in Genesis, the um, this spirit is powerful. The spirit is this incredible creative force. And we're told that, you know, from the void and from chaos, the whole universe is brought into being. In chapter two, we get told that God, the spirit is the Ruach, the breath of God. And God breathes life into every creature, including us these little earthlings that God breathes life into. And God wants to befriend us, at the earth creatures that he made. And from then on, all the way through the Old Testament, the spirit acts in many different ways. The spirit is inspiration. The spirit is guide, giver of wisdom, um, renewing energy. The spirit comes as a visitor in dreams and visions. The, uh, the spirit is the imparter of prophecy the emboldener of uh, prophets, and the one who brings messages from God. So all the way through the scriptures, the spirit is present in so many different ways. When we move into the New Testament, the spirit is present in the lives of Mary and Joseph and Elizabeth and Zechariah. And it's the spirit, again, disturbing that drives Jesus out into the wilderness to be tested. It's the spirit of love at work in miracles in the teachings, the healings, and all that Jesus done does, the spirit is present. And then when Jesus goes to heaven, he tells his disciples in John's gospel this very strange things, thing. It's better for you if I go, you'll do greater things. So stay now and wait, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Well, when we read the Acts of the Apostles, we find that actually the, the early Christians did some incredibly wild stuff. They preached to crowds, they converted and baptized thousands of people, they lived in community together, they shared all their goods. It was a really powerful time and the Holy Spirit was working in them. And so we might say, well, what about you and I? I mean, I haven't turned any water into wine recently as much as I have tried on occasion when it's after 8 p.m. and the LCBO is shut. Um, you know, I, I can't speak in tongues. I don't know about you, some of you probably can. I know I can't. Um, you know, where is the spirit? We might say, I haven't converted 100 people in my lifetime. So where are these? Um, where's this work of the spirit in my life? Well, be encouraged, because now I'm going to tell you 
where the Holy Spirit is in your life. St. Paul was really, really helpful in helping us to understand the work of the Spirit in, the li- in our lives in really, really, um, you know, many different ordinary forms. He might have converted thousands of people and started the church in the West. Um, he may have experienced miraculous breakouts from prison and uh, cured the sick. Um, But he told his converts some very, very wonderful and simple things about the Holy Spirit in their life. He said, no one can confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord apart from the Holy Spirit. That's pretty simple. If you can confess Jesus as Lord, then you have the Holy Spirit within you. But he also went on and outlined the gifts, many of the gifts of the Spirit. And he understood that everybody is gifted differently by the Spirit. And so he told them, some of you are teachers, some of you are prophets. Okay, now don't get hung up about prophets. You don't have to wear camel skin and go out into the desert. Prophets are people who see the truth and tell it. And there are many of you who are prophets. Um, Some are apostles. You might not feel like you're an apostle. But, you know, there are many of you who who share your faith with your neighbor and your friend or invite somebody to, uh, to church or tell them about, tell them they'll pray for them. You're being apostles when you do that. He said some people are just are encouragers. They have the gift of encouragement. Some people are generous, really generous. And that is a gift of the spirit. Some people are just helpers. They're helpful people. It's a gift of the spirit because not everybody's helpful. He taught his communities to live together um, like a body, like a human body. And he said to them, appreciate all the different parts of the body. Not every part of the body works and behaves in the same way, but together it makes a coherent whole. And sometimes it's the lowliest parts that are the most useful. And not only did he explain that our various gifts um, are from the Holy Spirit, but he also taught his his, uh, followers, um, if we look in the book of Galatians, and you'll all know this very, very well, that as we live day to day following Jesus, that it is the spirit within us that causes the fruit to grow, the fruit of the spirit. And fruit takes time to grow. And uh, and there are many, many different fruits of the spirit. And so he basically said that the aim of being a Christian is to walk on this earth as a fruitful, fruitful tree, being a living and breathing example of love and joy and peace and patience, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. And all of those fruit of the Spirit point to one thing, the love of God for all of humankind, which is made manifest in Jesus Christ. And so our lives are to accept the gifts of the Spirit that are given to us, to live in them, to grow the fruit of the Spirit within us, and to be witnesses of Christ's love in the world. And the Holy Spirit is so wide ranging in her reach that the best way to see the Holy Spirit at work in yourself and in other people is, I think, is simply to be open to seeing the Spirit absolutely everywhere and to be open to having our own lives be both comforted by the Spirit and disturbed by the Holy Spirit. I was thinking about this comforting and disturbing while I was doing some of the gardening, you know, like a plant. Plants need to be watered. They need to be given light and sun, warmth. They need to be fed. They need to be planted in the right spot. But there are also times with our plants when we have to prune them. We have to deadhead them. Uh, we have to train them to go in the right direction. We have to cut them back so that they'll grow in a, in a greater way next year. Or like the wisteria, you know, you, you trim it and trim it and then suddenly it blooms. And it's, it's a wonderful miracle of it's the fruit appearing. And if we open our eyes to see God at work, we will see God in all of creation and we will see God in one another. So when I look at you and I, it's really nice, actually, I can actually see you easier on Zoom. It's kind of funny. I'm just going to move screens for a second. I'm just going to take a look at all of you. All right. I see a lot of names as well. but I know who you are. So when I look at you, I see people who are wise now, not all of you. Don't get it, let it go to your head. <laughs> but no, I see people who are wise. I see people who I know are incredible intercessors. I know that there's people who, who pray and diligently pray for one another. There are people here today who give generously. 
There are people of you who are incredible organizers. There are people amongst you who organize me, and I thank you for that. Um, there, are, there are some of you who effortlessly share good news with your neighbors. There are others of us who you know, get terrified by the thought of sharing good news with our neighbors. Um, there are some of you who are remarkably patient like I, I look at some of you and I know that is a patient person. I look in the mirror, I know that is not a patient person. Um, there are some of you who emit peacefulness and just to spend time with you makes other people feel calmer. Um, there are some of you where to be with you, we leave feeling better about ourselves. And so I just want you to think about this. We've had such a difficult time over the last year or so what if we really try hard as a community to see these things in one another and to recognize them for what they are? They are the spirit of God at work in you. They're the spirit of God at work in each other. It's so easy for us to see other people's shortcomings or to see our own shortcomings, but not the gifts. And I think after all this time apart, when we start to see one another again, starting with these little groups, let's not be afraid to tell each other that we see the spirit of God in them. Um, let's not be afraid to say, you know what, I've really missed you. You know, I'm looking now, Virginia, Reg, Beverly, I've missed you. And you know what I've missed is this, because I miss the spirit of God present in you. And it's so good to be back together again. Let's, let's encourage and affirm the gifts that we see. You know, tell them, it's good to see you. I've missed your joy. I've missed your wisdom. I've missed your prayerfulness. I've missed your faith. I've simply missed your presence. And I've missed the gift of God that is evident in you. And let's commit to seeing the work of God, the work of the Holy Spirit in ordinary situations. You know, we can see coincidences or we can see God moments. And... Um, you know, when someone comes to mind, let's think of it as a God moment. Let's pray for them or give them a call or tell them something encouraging. And remember that the spirit that disturbs us is sometimes for the comfort of another. And the spirit that disturbs, that disturbs another might be for our comfort. So I'm going to finish with a good news story where God's been at work. And you, you may have read it already in the e-blast, but I think this is a good news story. And I see God in this story, not a coincidence. So two Sundays ago, I asked if you could be generous and help towards getting a new minivan for the Raslans because uh, Jamal is terminally ill and their, their van had broken down and it's not repairable. And so Jean and I, Jean Hoover and I were doing a little gardening in the week and she said, um, you don't know anybody that uh, needs a really good minivan, do you? And I was like, um, yes. <laughs> so anyway, the long and short of it is we called the person and uh, they had a minivan. It's, it's old, but it has very, very little mileage. One owner, 81,000 uh, kilometers on it. One owner um, been serviced every time it needed it and sprayed every time it needed it. Not like my cars. And um, we had brought in in one week $5,000. And guess how much the minivan was? It was $5,000. Now, we've brought in some more money as well, and we've been able to put some brakes on it and put rims on the winter tires, and we've got to pay a bit of HST, and hopefully there's some money left over that we can put some insurance on it, or at least part of the insurance for them as well. All of this is to say that we could say, well, that was just a coincidence. Or we could choose to say the Spirit of God is at work, and God is hearing prayer, and seeing generosity and knowing need. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is at work offering, sorry, sorry, sometimes seeing the Holy Spirit at work and operating with faith is as simple as just a change in our perception. That when we change our perception, we can see God everywhere. So I'm going to end with some words uh, for Pentecost. And these are from William Blake. He said, Unless the eye catch fire, the God will not be seen. Unless the ear catch fire, the God will not be heard. Unless the tongue catch fire, the God will not be named. Unless the heart catch fire, the God will not be loved. Unless the mind catch fire, the God will not be known.
And so let us pray this week and ever onwards that we may have our ears, our eyes, our tongues, our heart, our mind, all caught fire to see God, to see Jesus, to see the Holy Spirit all around us always. Amen. And now, let us confess the faith of our baptism together as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon us, come around us, come within us, come to lead us, come to guide us, that we may work in your power and rest in your presence through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God forever. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, creator blessed, and in our souls, take up your rest. Come with your grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts that you have made. 
Our bidding today is the Lord is here. And your response is his spirit is with us. Holy Spirit, giver of all good gifts, come into our darkness as light. Come as the wind to refresh and uplift us. Come as joy to disperse our sorrows. Come as power to enable us and to encourage us. Come as love to revive your church. Granting church leaders an extra measure of your gifts as they valiantly strive to guide us in our spiritual journey through these trying, trying and uncertain times. May we in turn show and share our gifts, permitting us to reach out in love through your grace to all. The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is with us. with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Direct our world leaders. Fill leaders with talent and discernment to make right decisions. Inspire our artists and musicians, writers and craftspeople. Palestine, come Holy Spirit of God, give peace and unity to all nations, especially Palestine and Israel, granting that the ceasefire will stand up to the test of time. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. The Lord is here. His spirit, spirit is, is with, with us. us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our homes, set our hearts on fire with the warmth of your love. Come stir our minds and inspire us to do new things. Guide us in our relationships with each other and draw us together in your fellowship of love and joy. Come, Holy Spirit, to Delaney and Adam as they set out on their life together in Christ. The Lord is here. His Spirit, His Spirit is with is us. us. We come with all those who are weary, all whose hope has dried up. We come with the despairing, the despondent, and all who are dispirited. We come with depressed and oppressed peoples. We pray for all who have become weak, for all who are infirm and cannot cope on their own, for the sick, especially Raymond, Annie, Charlotte, Grant, Leslie, Hugh, Denise, Father Ted, Caroline, and Julio, Pat, Wayne, Hermia, Robert, David, Terry, Randy and Sandy, Alvin, Mark, Scott, Oliver, Kadim, Jamal, Diane, Gord, Alan, O Spirit of God, stir up your power 
and come among us, driving out all sickness and ailments. The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is, with His spirit us. is with us. Spirit of God, you breathe life into dry bones. You give new life to your people. We pray for our loved ones departed, especially Victor and Jane. We also pray for those who lost their lives, especially children in the conflict between Palestine and Israel last week. Come, Holy Spirit. Comfort all those who mourn the loss of their loved ones. Strengthen them and instill your joy in them that their joy may be made complete. The Lord is here. The Spirit, the Spirit is with us. us. Come, Holy Spirit to drive the pandemic virus into dormancy, that countries world over may return to regular in church activities and businesses to normal activities. The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is with us. Father, awaken our souls in a blaze of faithful consciousness as we offer you these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you are well pleased. Amen. 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 And now in the spirit of Pentecost, let's all... Uh, <clears throat> unmute ourselves let's say the lord's prayer together and uh, in whichever language you feel most drawn to pray and uh johan if we get some crazy feedback if you could be ready on the mute button <laughs> so as our savior taught us let us pray our father your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. Kingdom, kingdom, power, and glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Glory God, to God, God from generation, generation to generation, generation in the church, in the church and, and in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Nicola, you need to unmute. Yep. If, um, if you have a candle ready now and... Uh, this, my candle is representing the Paschal candle from the church. And if you can all light your candle to represent the Holy Spirit. Better say the prayer real quick before Andrew's candle goes out. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That's right. Even <laughs> a little is good. All right, let us pray. And maybe if you don't have one right now, don't worry. You can just light one and maybe have it on sometime this evening. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak, women and men, tell out your word. The young receive visions 
the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. And now we'll sing, Wind Who Makes All Winds That Blow. could all unmute for the commission. For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts, and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead, that power might be at work in us. As part, as part of God's church here in Markham, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit, his power, you will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places. We will. And now in the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created, breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. Amen. May the spirit who overshadowed the Virgin Mary when the eternal son came among us, make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. 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 May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. 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 And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Holy Spirit.
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in light and peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, blessings, everybody, for this week. Now, does anybody have anything to uh, sell? We've had the wedding story, so that's great. Well, Next week, he won't be here, but it's Joshua's birthday next week. Oh, Joshua, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. My birthday is finally falling on the holiday Monday again this year. Oh, oh, happy birthday, happy Nancy. Birthday, Nancy. Happy birthday, Nancy. Happy birthday, Nancy. Happy birthday, Nancy. Birthday. 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 All right, now, is there anybody, any other birthdays? Okay, I don't see any. All right, let's just, we'll just sing it anyway. Are you ready? Joshua uh, and Nancy. Happy birthday to you. 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 Beautiful. Sound like the tongues of Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> what a quick announcement uh it'll take me about 10 seconds uh this uh about what four, day, four days ago five days ago we just launched a relaunch sort of uh a little program uh that's starting with uh parkway studio uh so if you haven't taken a look at this website um i don't know what you've been doing with your time but you need to get on this website right away uh www.parkwaystudio.ca um and if you go into the top tab, we have something called Parkway Summer Session. Now, essentially, this is four weeks of uh, calling 30 artists. We only have room for 30. And I like to use the word artists, not kids, uh, because, you know, uh, skill level doesn't matter in terms of age. So ages 30 to 18 from any skill level, if you've never touched anything or you're one of the most advanced players, uh, we are focusing on vocals, uh, guitar, mm -hmm. strings. Uh, piano and percussion. So we have those four sections. But of course, if you're, if you're also not too musical, that's okay. We have sort of a podcast and production element as well. So everything's covered. Uh, so this is sort of just our little poster. Uh, why wait for summer EPs when you can just make your own? Uh, and then we'll go into uh, the How It Works tab real quickly. Um, and sort of, you can just uh, take your time with this. I'm not going to go in depth, but really quickly, uh, registration opens June 1st, so in about just under 10 days. Uh, all our contact information is there. There will be a FAQ coming out tonight. Uh, and Johan, if you want to just scroll a little bit. Uh, yeah, so step one, you sign up on June 1st. Uh, you have about uh, seven weeks to sign up. Uh, step two, you get your very own initialed mask. What? Um, and then step three, uh, we essentially, well, step two, we work on music together. We get you ready. Uh, part, part of the music will be done with the instructors. We have a list of instructors that you can look, uh, look up on the website as well. Uh, but part of the music will actually be from them. If it's original music, if it's covers they enjoy, if it's you know music with their band, whatever it is, they get to do it. And my choir will know this. They will get the studio experience that the choir has been enjoying exclusively for the whole year. So uh, they, they get to sort of come in and enjoy that pro uh, process. Uh, step four, they create their own album art. Uh, don't worry, we have some tools. If they're not too, you know, uh, they're not too artsy, that's okay. Uh, so step five, we'll sort of mix and master their uh, mini album, their mini EP for them. And the school. depending on COVID, uh, we'll just have a outdoor release, album release party. Uh, essentially, we were going to do a concert, but just to be safe, we don't want to put any, you know, anyone in risk. We're just going to have a little picnic, again, depending on COVID, <laughs> put some speakers on, listen to all the music that the kids have made uh, in, in, the, in this four weeks, okay? So, again, I'm sorry, I have to cut it off at 18. I know everyone wants to come in now, but I'm sorry, I have to cut it off at 18. Maybe, maybe after this, we'll see if we can do an adult version, okay? 
So if you know anyone, grandkids, neighbors, anyone who's uh, artsy, we've already got a bit of a lineup before June 1st, which is amazing. Uh, but watch out for an FAQ that, that'll uh, be released tonight about sort of just, you know, standard questions. And once June 1st begins, I will be uh, holding weekly information sessions. So you, uh, you can drop in or if anyone has specific questions, because I know COVID is a really big variable and that's okay. Okay, so I just want to introduce that to everyone. Thank you very much. And uh, I just wanted to mention um, that we have uh, on this Tuesday at seven o'clock, we're going to be doing um, another gathering of the uh, the Grace Wellness Group. Um, it's a group that's just meant to it's it's a group that's meant for anyone who's maybe not doing 100 percent right now. Uh, we're going to be watching a quick video on just ways of taking care of ourselves um, during this time. And uh, we'll each take a few minutes, if we so care, to share what uh, what's up and maybe what we've been doing to keep ourselves keep ourselves going during this time. So that's Tuesday at 7 uh, to 8. We'll be watching a quick video and just kind of being there for each other. Um, so if that sounds like something you might want to come be a part of, then uh, the Zoom link will be, should, has been sent out in the e-blast. So, and if you don't have it, get in touch with Nicola and I and we'll, 